Greetings, beloved. Welcome to Narrowgate Channel. Another beautiful day our Father God has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I welcome those who just joined Narrowgate Channel. Let us learn together its operation. Give Jesus your 100%. In 2024, beloved, I'm wrapping up all the messages that our Father has given me. And it's my last year on YouTube. Our Father is done, beloved. We serve a powerful God, the greater I am, the one and only risen King, the only wise God. In him are hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. Hallelujah. We continue, beloved. You remember the scripture in the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse 9. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. That was the message that was given to prophet Haggai to go and give Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was a governor of Judah after they returned from exile. Praise the name of the Lord. Today I'm going to touch a little bit on the first temple and I'm going to go to the construction of the second temple i said i was going to do this video when you read in the book of ezra and nehemiah while the children of israel were returning from captivity those two books focused more on the rebuilding of the walls but i am going to focus on the reconstruction of the second temple. Praise the name of the Lord. And the story is not as detailed and sequential as the reconstruction of the walls. I will give a summary about the first temple, which we know it was Solomon who built the first temple. David wanted to build the house of the Lord with all of his heart. However, the Lord said unto him that he cannot build his house because he is a man of war and he shed too much blood. However, he said, his seed will build his house. And David, before he passed on, he sat down with his son Solomon and he told him exactly what he must do. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm just going to give a high level summary. Then I will go through some of the verses and we will move to the reconstruction of the second temple. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of God says that it was during the fourth year of King Solomon as a king of Israel. In the second day, in the second month called Ziph, that Solomon began to build the house of the Lord. There was a king from Tyre. His name was Hiram. He helped David a lot. He provided him with cedar and timber. The word of God says that Hiram was a good friend of David, or he was fond of King David. So he helped Solomon with everything that he required from him. The only thing that he asked from King Solomon is that he provides food for his family. And the word of God says that Solomon provided food to King Hiram, the king of Tyre, a year by year. We know that Solomon was very rich. So, like I said, he started the construction in the fourth year of his reign on the second day of the second month, which is called Ziph. Again, the word of God says that 
on the 11th year of his reign, on the 8th month of that 11th year, he completed the house of the Lord. That month is called Bull, according to the word of God. And the temple was big and it was beautiful. The word of God says that the altar was made of pure gold. The candlesticks, gold was everywhere. We know those are the vessels that Nebuchadnezzar took to Babylon. And they dedicated the temple. They prayed. They offered sacrifices unto the Lord. That day, King Solomon prayed. He prayed unto the Lord that when the children of Israel come to the temple and humble themselves, God must hear their prayer. And God answered Solomon, the well-known scripture, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, I will hear their prayer, I will heal their land. That was the answer that God was giving to King Solomon. Praise the name of the Lord. So after 400 years, the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. We know that the children of Israel disobeyed God and they were taken into captivity. So the Babylonians burned the temple and the house of the king and the houses of the people of God in Jerusalem. Praise the name of the Lord. Then after that, Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah 25, 11, And Daniel quoted the same prophecy that after 70 years of the children of Israel in captivity, this is the southern kingdom because the northern kingdom is still in captivity up to today. I'm talking of Judah and Benjamin because they were the ones in the southern kingdom. So after 70 years, they will return from Babylon. And that was the time that God wanted them to rebuild his house in preparation of the Messiah. At that time, the Babylonians were no longer in power. The kingdom was taken by the Medes and the Persians. So we know that King Cyrus wrote a letter that all the Jews should be released to go and build the house of their God. And indeed, they left to go back to Jerusalem. So in the book of Haggai chapter 1, we get to hear about Zerubbabel, who was a governor of Judah. Zerubbabel was born in exile. And he took the leadership together with Joshua, the high priest, in the reconstruction of the temple, the second temple. Praise the name of the Lord. Soon after they completed the foundation, they faced opposition from their enemies. And the project was on hold for 17 years until the reign of Darius. So King Darius allowed them to complete the house of the Lord. The word of God says that some of the seniors of the children of Israel who knew the first temple, when they saw the foundation of the new temple, they cried, they cried out loud, because it was smaller compared to the one that King Solomon built. 
However, others rejoiced because they knew that at least now we can go and worship our God. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord sent prophet Haggai and prophet Zechariah to go and encourage Zerubbabel. We remember the scriptures like do not despise the days of small beginning. That was the encouragement that God gave prophet Zechariah to go and give Zerubbabel. Praise the name of the Lord. So the book of Zechariah has history and prophecy. Some of the prophecy in our time, they are part of history, just like the prophecy to Zerubbabel. And we know that Zechariah prophesied about the two witnesses. He prophesied about the second coming of the Lord. When you go to the book of Haggai, Prophet Haggai prophesied to Zerubbabel. In fact, in Haggai chapter 1, the Lord spoke through Prophet Haggai, telling the children of Israel that you have your vineyards, you have your houses, you have your fields, yet I do not have my house. You are staying in your house, yet I do not have a house. That is the time where the Spirit of the Lord spoke to Zerubbabel and Joshua the high priest to lead this project. Praise the name of the Lord. We don't hear a lot about Zerubbabel, but what he did was great. And his story, again, as we go through it, you will see that it was a foreshadow of the Messiah, what the Lord spoke into Zerubbabel's life at that time. Praise the name of the Lord. After 17 years of the project being on hold, they completed the second temple. And as Haggai said in Haggai chapter 2 verse 9, that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. And indeed, Solomon's temple was big. It was beautiful. It was decorated with gold. However, this temple that was reconstructed through the leadership of Zerubbabel and the high priest Joshua was not as big, was not as fancy. However, it was more glorious because this is the same temple that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ walked right in. So that is why God said the glory of the second temple will be greater than the former. Because Solomon's one, they only experienced the presence. But the second temple experienced God in flesh. Praise the name of the Lord. I am going to go through the scriptures. I will be covering the same story, but giving you the scriptures as well, just for your better understanding. You won't be seeing my face much until I finish. Praise the name of the Lord. It is important, beloved, that we know about the first and the second temple. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us quickly cover the first temple. I will go to the word of God in the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verse 3. 
I have shared that David wanted to build the house of God. He wanted to build the house of God so that he can put the ark of covenant inside. And we know that the ark of covenant contained the ten commandments. So God responded to David in First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 3. He said, thou shalt not build a house for my name because thou has been a man of war and has shed blood. So that is the reason why David could not build the house of the Lord. In the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 3, verse 1 up to 2, the word of God says, Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared unto David his father in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Onan the Jubicide. And he began to build in the second day of the second month, in the fourth year of his reign. I have shared that. Solomon ordered vast quantities of cedar wood from King Hiram of Tyre. We get that in First Kings chapter 5. The king was a great fan of David. Therefore, he assisted King Solomon with everything he requested in exchange for food for his household. Hiram gave Solomon cedar trees and fir trees according to all his desires. And Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 measures of wheat for food to his household and 20 measures of pure oil. Solomon gave Hiram this provision year by year. Praise the name of the Lord. In 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1, the word of God says that in the fourth year of Solomon's reign, in the month Ziph, which is the second month, he began to build the house of the Lord. As I have shared, the second month is called Ziph. In the eleventh year, in the month of Bol, which is the eighth month, was the house furnished throughout all the parts thereof and according to all the fashion of it. So it took around seven years or about seven years to complete the temple. Praise the name of the Lord. Our father taught us the significance of the number seven. So we know Solomon inaugurated it with prayer and sacrifices and even invited non-Jews to come and pray with them. He urged God to pay particular heed to their prayers, thus all the people of the earth will know your name and fear thee, as does your people Israel. And they will recognize that your name is attached to this house that I have built. And we get that in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 43. After 400 years, the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. And we get that in 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 8 to 9. The word of God says, And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon unto Jerusalem. And he burned the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem and every great man's house burnt he with fire. That is how the temple was destroyed, the first temple. And we remember that God prophesied through Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 11. He said that, and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and this nation shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Again, while Daniel was interceding on behalf of Israel while he was in captivity, 
The word of God says that in Daniel chapter 9, verse 2, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he will accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. So we know that God used prophet Jeremiah to warn the southern kingdom of their deeds. And he told them that he will send the Babylonians to take them into captivity due to their sins. So God promised that they will be there for 70 years. 70 years later, a number of Jews returned to Israel, led by the prophets Ezra and Nehemiah. The Persian king appointed Zerubbabel as a governor of Judah, and we get that in the book of Haggai chapter 1 verse 1. And right away, Zerubbabel began rebuilding the temple with the help of Joshua the high priest. So I want us to read from the book of Haggai chapter 1 from verse 1 up to 2. The word of God says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Again, I will read Haggai chapter 1, verse 14 to 15. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. In the four and twentieth day of the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. Remember I said that God sent prophet Haggai to the children of Israel to speak to them that he is not happy that his house is not bad. So Haggai chapter 1 is mostly about that. You can read so I want us to look at who is Zerubbabel. He did something significant in the word of God, yet we do not really talk about him. Zerubbabel was the grandson of King Jehoiakim of Judah. You get that in 1 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 17. And he was a descendant of David. Jehoiakim was the 19th king of the kings of Judah in Jerusalem. And he only reigned for three months. So Zerubbabel was born in Babylon during the exile between 587 and 539 BC. He traveled to Judah after King Cyrus II allowed the Judean captives to return to their homeland to rebuild the temple. So you get that in Ezra chapter 1 from verse 1 up to 4. And you can read Ezra 6, 3 up to 5. And you can read again from 8 to 10. He became the governor of Judah after the exile that you get in Haggai chapter 1. He is listed in Matthew chapter 1 and in Luke chapter 3 in the genealogy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As a governor of Judah, he was appointed as one of the initial leaders who supervised the reconstruction of the second temple in Jerusalem with the help of Joshua the high priest. So we can see that Zerubbabel was quite significant in the word of God, yet we don't talk much about him. He was even mentioned in the genealogy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, like I said. I will read the word of God from the book of Ezra chapter 1 verse 1 up to 4. It's important that I read this out. 
Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Remember Jeremiah 25, 11, the Lord said after 70 years, the children of Israel will return back in preparation for the reconstruction of the temple. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods, and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. That is the word of God, beloved. As verse 1 of the book of Ezra chapter 1 says that this is the fulfillment of the prophecy that was given to prophet Jeremiah. After 70 years, Cyrus, king of Persia, said the Jews must go back home to go and build the house of their God. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the fulfillment. So after a season of around 14 months for the Jews to circle, they begin to rebuild the house of the Lord. It wasn't long before opposition arose from surrounding adversaries and eventually the work was brought to a standstill by order of King Artaxerxes. You get that in Ezra chapter 4 from verse 1 up to 24. Only the foundation was laid and completed. The foundation showed that this new temple was going to be much smaller than Solomon's original temple. This was a disappointment to those who remembered the former structure. I want us to read from the book of Ezra chapter 4, verse 3 to 5. This was the time when they were facing opposition during their reconstruction of the second temple. In verse 1 and 2 of the same chapter, the word of God says that when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, they went to them. They said that they want to work with them. So this was the answer that Zerubbabel gave unto them. The word of God says from verse 3, But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus the king of Persia hath commanded us. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, the king of Persia. So you can see the opposition that the children of Israel were facing just to complete the house of God. These people weakened their hands. Again, I will read Ezra chapter 3 verse 12. The word of God says, But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men, 
that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice. And many shouted aloud for joy, as I have shared, beloved, that some of the ancient men wept because they could see that the new temple or the second temple is much smaller compared to the first temple that Solomon built. However, the Lord sent prophet Haggai to address their disappointment. And we get that in the book of Haggai chapter 2 verse 3 to 4. The word of God says, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. So we see God sending prophet Haggai to go and encourage them to continue to build the house of the Lord irrespective of the challenges, not only from their adversaries, even the ancient men who were there who saw the first temple. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, I want us to read from the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10. God sent prophet Zechariah to go and encourage Zerubbabel because of the opposition that he was facing. The word of God says, for who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. God had great plans for this temple because this is the temple that the Lord, our Savior, was going to go inside and teach the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. After a 17-year delay under the next king of Persia, which is now Darius, the Jews were granted the permission to continue rebuilding. The temple was completed within three and a half years after the second effort began. It was completed in 516 BC. Again, I want to read Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 to 9. Another encouragement that God sent to Zerubbabel through prophet Zechariah. The word of God says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. There is absolutely nothing our God cannot do, irrespective of the opposition, beloved. Zerubbabel completed the project of reconstructing the second temple. Zerubbabel, a descendant of King David, was identified with the coming of the Messiah by prophet Haggai and prophet Zechariah. The Jewish people began to see Zerubbabel as their great hope for reviving David's kingship and for liberation from the Persians. Prophet Haggai declared that God will use Zerubbabel to overthrow and destroy kingdoms.
And we get that in Haggai chapter 2, verse 20 to 23. The word of God says, And again the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses of their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, said the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shelter, saith the Lord, and will make thee as a signet. For I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. That is the powerful word of God, beloved. We can see that that is a metaphor, that God is talking about the Messiah. A signet ring is a seal of royal authority. So when we go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 24 to 25, the word of God says, As I live, saith the Lord, through Coniah, also known as Jehoiakim, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet upon my right hand, yet will I pluck thee thence. And I will give thee into the hand of them that seek thy life, and unto the hand of them whose face thou fearest, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. Remember, God said in verse 24 of Jeremiah chapter 22 that he wore a signet ring on his right hand. Even though I will pull you off because these people were disobedient unto the Lord. Years later, God is reversing that curse. He said to Zerubbabel, he will make him a signet. He has chosen him. Praise the name of the Lord. So like I said before, beloved, this was a metaphor. God was referring to to the Messiah. So although Zerubbabel temple was smaller than Solomon's first temple, God promised a greater glory. So we get that in Haggai chapter 2 verse 9. The word of God says that the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. This was fulfilled centuries later when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came into the temple courts. King Solomon's temple never received a visit from the Messiah, but Zerubbabel's temple did. Praise the name of the Lord. That is how the second temple was reconstructed. We can learn a lot from this wonderful story, beloved, that Zerubbabel completed his project irrespective of the opposition that he faced. The Lord sent prophet Zechariah and said to uh, Zerubbabel that with your hands, the foundation was laid and your same hands will complete the house of the Lord. God is faithful, beloved. Even though the project was on hold for 17 years, God continued to encourage them. And the house of the Lord was completed. Praise the name of the Lord. Like I said, we can learn a lot from the story of Zerubbabel that we have to press on. God is faithful to his word. And we often quote the scripture in the book of Zechariah, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. So again, we get to learn that 
We do not finish by our own strength. We have to constantly depend on God. Again, the children of Israel were told not to despise the days of small beginnings. We should not be moved by what we see. The ancient Jews who were there during the time of Solomon, they were comparing the second temple to the first one just by seeing the foundation. However, God said the glory of the latter will be greater than the former. They shouldn't be moved by what they are seeing. Praise the name of the Lord. And we can say again that Zerubbabel's story was used as well as a metaphor because God said that he has chosen Zerubbabel and he will make him as a signet. And again, he said that Zerubbabel will overthrow the throne of kingdoms and he will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen and he will overthrow the chariots and those that ride them and the horses and their riders shall come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. That was a metaphor God was referring to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we know that he is going to overthrow the throne of the kingdoms. We know that he is going to destroy the heathens. So this is still a prophecy in our dispensation. It's about the second coming. When the Lord will destroy all those who took the mark. The enemies of God. Those who took the mark of the beast. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's why I said that Zerubbabel is so significant in the word of God. Yet we do not talk much about him. So now we know, beloved, about the construction of the first temple and when it was destroyed and the reconstruction of the second temple. So the second temple was destroyed 70 years after the death of Christ. The Romans reclaimed Jerusalem and destroyed the second temple. And we are not going to have the third temple in this current earth. The third temple will be in the new earth. As prophet Ezekiel described it from the book of Ezekiel chapter 40 right up to Ezekiel chapter 48. Praise the name of the Lord. So I will end it here, beloved. Stay blessed as we continue to learn. Bye-bye.